In this lecture, we will talk about the importance of interstitial gel in preventing fluid accumulation in the interstitium or the importance of interstitial gel in preventing edema. Our this lecture is basically the continuation of our previous lecture which is basically the safety factors that normally prevent edema. In this lecture, in our previous lecture, we discussed in detail the first safety factor which is the low compliance of interstitium in the negative interstitial fluid pressure range in detail. We discussed this, this thing in detail. But the interstitial gel, which is the normal interstitium in normal circumstances, basically this is the interstitium, this is a capillary. Blood is coming from the heart through aorta, through the arteries and finally it is coming at the capillary level and plasma transfer to the cells or uh, diffusion of nutrients to the cell and from the cells basically occurs at the interstitium and the, at the inter at the uh, it basically diffusion occurs at the level of capillaries and at the capillary level we have drawn this interstitium so outside this capillary this is the interstitium and this is interstitium in normal person and normally this interstitium is in the gel form this is in the interstitial interstitial gel or this interstitium normally is in the gel form and we are talking about its importance that why if this interstitium is in gel form normally how this will basically prevent fluid accumulation or how this will prevent edema so we will go towards our uh, previous lecture in which we started discussing the safety factors that normally prevent edema and we discussed the first factor is the low compliance of interstitium in negative interstitial fluid range. Now, with the help of this uh, graph, we discussed uh, this thing that the, 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 the interstitium is basically not very much compliant or its compliance is very low when the interstitial fluid pressure, this interstitial fluid pressure, when this is in the negative zone. But as soon as this enters the positive zone, see here it is in the negative zone, but as soon as here at this point it enters the positive range, the compliance decreases. It becomes very, uh, sorry, the compliance increases, the interstitium becomes very much compliant and it allows a lot of fluid collection to occur. Now, to understand this, uh, we must uh, revise quickly that the, 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 the forces which are present at the level of capillaries, we discussed that the capillary hydrostatic pressure, the interstitial fluid pressure, the plasma colloid osmotic pressure and interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure are active at the level of capillaries in um, basically in filtration. Now if the filtration of fluid from the capillary into the interstitium is high, edema will occur. Now we are basically focusing on this interstitial fluid pressure and we know that in the negative zone, in the negative zone with slight increase in the plasma volume with slight increase in the plasma fluid or uh, in the interstitial fluid volume there is big increase there is a big increase in the interstitial fluid pressure the interstitial fluid pressure this pressure which normally forces the fluid to go into the capillary and preventing the edema so with slight increase in fluid in this interstitium there is big increase in the interstitial fluid pressure which has been shown here that with slight increase in the volume there is a big increase from the negative zone to the positive but as soon as this interstitial fluid pressure when it enters the positive zone then even with slight increase even with bigger increase in volume there is no much increase in the interstitial fluid pressure and then this pressure is not able to L to uh, uh, this pressure is not basically able to stop movement of fluid from capillary into the interstitium or from capillary outside the um, uh, outside the capillary into the interstitium or the occurrence of edema. So we discussed in detail that in the negative zone, small increase in volume will inc will result in bigger um, increase in the interstitial fluid pressure, and that increase that increase in interstitial fluid pressure will basically help in preventing the uh, in preventing the movement of fluid from the capillary into the interstitium. But once it enters or it crosses the zero and it enters the positive range, then even small increase in volume or sorry even large increase in volume will not much increase the interstitial fluid pressure. Rather, the fluid in the the fluid in the interstitium will keep on increasing and the pressure will not that much increase. The pressure will not increase that much, rather the fluid will continue to collect or increase or accumulate in the interstitium. Now how this thing is happening, the, the interstitium basically is in the gel form and this gel form of interstitium is very much helpful in preventing the accumulation of fluid in the interstitium in normal circumstances and the gel form of the interstitium simply means that there are very small amounts of fluid that are tightly packed in the proteoglycans. So here we have the capillary, here we have the interstitium. The interstitium is basically made of these uh, proteoglycans. proteoglycans. Proteoglycans are basically a combination of proteins and uh, carbohydrates and these proteoglycans will not allow the free movement of fluid and small amount of fluid is accumulated in the proteoglycans and it basically gives a gel appearance to the interstitium which is the interstitial gel and this 
interstitial gel basically contributes to the low compliance. This interstitial gel basically contributes to the low compliance and it basically uh, prevent the movement of fluid or it prevents the movement of free fluid in the interstitium. So the interstitial gel is basically helpful in preventing uh, accumulation of fluid or in preventing edema to occur. Now, once the interstitium, basically when the, once the interstitial fluid pressure enters the positive range, once the interstitial fluid pressure enters the positive range or when it crosses the zero, there is a lot of accumulation of fluid in the interstitium and there is no much increase in the interstitial free fluid pressure be because at, in the positive pressure range, in the positive pressure range, there is a lot of uh, accumulation of fluid and the formation of free fluid starts to occur in the interstitium. And here we see there is accumulation of free fluid in, um, in the interstitium and free fluid has started accumulated in the fibers, in the filaments of these proteoglycans. And this has basically started moving around. The free, uh, the free fluid has basically started moving around and edema has occurred. And it has occurred only when the interstitial free fluid pressure has entered the positive uh, range or the positive zone and only at that point the accumulation of volume or accumulation of extra fluid in the interstitium starts occurring. So this is basically the first factor, the first safety factor that normally will prevent edema. Now uh, there are a lot of other factors uh, which basically are preventing edema from formation but this is uh, the first factor and uh, we, this, uh, we have discussed this thing in detail and now we, uh, we simply know that in normal human being with normal interstitium and normal pressures normal normal capillary hydrostatic pressure normal interstitial fluid pressure normal plasma colloid osmotic pressure and normal interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure and even with uh, even with uh, people with slight changes slight increase or decrease in these uh, pressures, there will not be enough accumulation of free fluid in the interstitium. And uh, there are a lot of factors, but one of the most important factor is the interstitial gel, which simply means that small amounts of fluid are present in the pockets, but they are not allowed to move freely. And there is no free movement, there is no free water for movement uh, to move around in the interstitium. And it gives it a gel appearance, and this interstitial gel is one of the most important factor in preventing the edema. Now that's all about the importance of interstitial gel and low compliance of the interstitium when the interstitial fluid pressure is in the negative range. In the next lecture, we will uh, discuss other factors, other factors regarding the low compliance and the uh, first safety factor in preventing the edema. Thanks a lot for watching the video.